It's only the particular parts of the world that you watch and where from that is different. And of course, the way that you watch it. Traditionally, it's thought that what we see is the, the world as it is. That isn't true. We see and feel only um, a very small part of seeing and feeling. The perception isn't random. It obviously works. So there has to be some relationship between what we see and the world. It's just that our representations aren't necessarily of the world. I knew the place, but I'd never been there before. And it was across a very large boulevard. It was a beautiful day, sunny day. And then suddenly I had this incredible flash of color. In my it was very, very brilliant, you know. And my whole vision was basically filled with, with color, with luminous color. It, it, it just completely switched my mind onto another level. And I wasn't, didn't have any kind of dark mood. I just felt full of light. So I walked towards it, and it came from the shop. And in the, in the shop window, there were these trays of prisms. And one of these prisms had sent me a beam of light. So he trapped a sunbeam and passed it through a prism. And there were the colors of the rainbow, the component parts of white light. What do you mean by light? How do you define Well, light is something that has uh, certain properties. It can be diffracted, it can be refracted, it can be reflected. If you talk about light, then you really have to talk about the whole electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is uh, essentially the gamut of electromagnetic radiation. And it can go some very long wavelengths have very little energy. So we can be bombarded with radio waves, which we are every day, but it's not going to hurt us. To the very short wavelength then, which is very powerful radiation, that's x-rays. So it isn't just light. There are certain frequencies that are beneficial and others that are not so beneficial. So this is what Mrs. Brown saw. Inside information on Junior's pockets. Yes, X-ray is a wonderful invention. The physical world of light is one thing, right? And it's described by a linear spectrum of size. That then falls onto our eye, and that generates a perception of color. But our perception of color is not a linear spectrum. Perception of color is a three-dimensional space, described by three variables. So you have hue, which is the circular axis of red, green, blue, and yellow. And you have saturation, which is the grayness of a color. So fire engine is a really saturated red, and pink is an unsaturated red. And then you have brightness, right, the intensity of color. So that creates this three-dimensional space. So the brain warps this one-dimensional space of light into this wonderful three-dimensional space of color. Every waking moment, we are all adapting and adjusting to the colors around us. The problem is that most of the time it's unconscious. Red is universally stimulating. It raises the pulse rate and the blood pressure. But the problem there is that it could be interpreted by any viewer as exhilarating and exciting or as demanding and aggressive and a strain. There's this idea called the inverted spectrum. So is your red the same as my red? We both call it red but your qualia could be my qualia of green. But we can never actually know unless I was able to get into your head and vice versa, right? Yeah. Um, because as far as our behavior goes, we always behave similarly towards that thing that we call red. Because there it's all about relativity. So, I mean, again, when I'm talking about the orange, I'm not sure everyone sees that orange in the same way. People memorize colors. You know, I can't imagine how anybody knows the difference in colors. There was a guy there talking about um, a device he designed for a colorblind person who only sees in grey tones. They designed a webcam which actually just sits in front of his eye and it basically averages out a kind of RGB value of one part of his vision. And he'll look at the sky and, get, and what it does, it converts it into a tone. Um, and then he looks at his paint palette, so he mixes it until he hears the same tone and he's just been able to start painting in color for the first time. Sometimes they fill a whole northern sky with waves of color, like a fire burning way beyond the horizon. 
And another time they looked like gigantic, fringed curtains of pure light. What do bees see? Well, we don't know. Their representation of color space is very different. Not only do they see in ultraviolet, their ability to discriminate between wavelengths is also different. Birds, for instance, are probably have a far more interesting color experience than we do, because they have more receptors for daylight. We only have three. So this light is actually flickering, right? Because it's fed by AC current. So a light room is, in fact, only half light. It's also half dark in time. But we see it as always being on. We see it as uniform light, right? Our brain fuses um, time at certain frequencies. Bees, on the other hand, that's a slideshow to a bee. They require 200 hertz, things changing 200 times a second before they'll see it as a constant. And the reason is because they're flying around and their eyes have to be much quicker. Suddenly, 1 60th of a second is quite a lot of space and you can hit something by then. So you want to be able to sample much faster. So in this room, this would be a strobe for a bee. We'd be moving like robots. Here is a formation of cubes, count them. How many cubes are there? Some of us will count six, some will count seven. And now, let's look at the same thing from another point of view, from another perspective. <laughs> Strange, isn't it, how a different point of view can change the appearance of things? So the more you know, the, the deeper you can see the deep structure of something. And that goes for probing with, probing with light. Our eyes can't sense reflectance of a surface directly. It always has to be under a light. So if you take a white surface and put it under blue light, the light coming from that surface is different than if that same surface were under a red light. Okay? So from the eye's perspective, that information is different. Same surface, but different information. Which means that the light that falls into it is infinitely meaningless. It could mean anything. It could mean any combination of reflectance and illumination. It wouldn't make any sense for the brain to see the light that falls onto its eye. It has to use something else in order to usefully interact with the world. And that something else is its experience. So what the brain has to do, it has to encode its history of interaction between itself and its environment. So what did this information, this pattern of light that fall, falls onto my now, what did this mean in the past? So when this fell into my eye before, what did I do? And then you do that again. So what we see then is not the world. What we see is a construct, almost a mathematical construct of what proved useful to see in the past. Right? It sees something because it didn't die when it saw it like that before. Our brain is a massively uh, parallel system and it can react massively parallel too. Otherwise it wouldn't be here, react to danger. The world that we see is a very restricted world uh, where we need things like space telescopes and micro tel and electron telescopes, uh, electron microscopes and things of that sort because we see and feel only uh, a very small part of seeing and feeling. There isn't this simple mapping between our perceptual world and our physical world. Everything's contextual. So that's what illusions show us, right? That everything is. How you see this element depends on what surrounds it, both in space and time. So you could have two cultures interpreting the same event completely differently. And both are right, and both are wrong. Right? But both can't help but see it differently. Their brains are simply physical manifestations of their history of experience of interacting with the world. Physics deals with dead matter. Uh, stones and rocks and atoms, but we're a collection of things, uh, of entangled atoms and, and entangled light, and we're more than the sum of our parts. Uh, how much and what this means, we, we, don't, we don't know as yet. They knew only that their sun god sent light and helped giving rays, and that was good enough. And there was no such thing as old light. Light remains the same age. Light travels at the same velocity, the velocity of light. 